All right, time for us to have a look at the stories that are making headlines around the world now. And we start with... Many of the international papers are continuing their coverage of the struggle between US politicians to reach an agreement over raising the debt ceiling. Gulf News is reporting that even if the deal is struck between the Democrats and Republicans, that ramifications for America's fiscal situation is likely to dampen investor sentiment for some time. South China Morning Post is considering the ramifications of a US default by asking whether Hong Kong should continue pegging its currency to the dollar. One of the immediate consequences would be a sharp fall in the value of the currency as well as a rise in inflation. European businesses are warning of a worsening economic outlook and that's due to the sovereign debt crisis and slowing world demand. According to the European edition of the Wall Street Journal, many leading European industrial companies are reporting that demand is falling away, prices of raw materials are too high and plans for expansion have been replaced by cost cuts. The front pages of the Financial Times have the news that European internet service providers are being told to take a greater role in blocking access to a website used to download pirated films. In a landmark case, Hollywood studios have forced the British Telecom to block access to an illegal movie downloading website. Now, according to the China Daily, the Premier Wen Jiabao has vowed to severely punish any corrupt individuals responsible for Saturday's high-speed train crash which killed 39 people. The authorities say the crash was caused by design flaws in signalling equipment, but allegations of corruption and lack of transparency are continuing to fuel public anger. And finally, The Independent has an article in which the sister of Facebook founder, Mark Zuckerberg, has called for an end to online anonymity. Randy Zuckerberg believes that if users were forced to use their real names, the levels of cyberbullying would decrease sharply. Well, Bandeep Ranga, chairman of Indusview, has joined us now. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, going through the papers today. Can we start with the Gulf News? And um, will they, won't they? I mean, they cannot think of defaulting, can they? Uh, that is just not a good scenario for them, right? Is it? It's already embarrassing enough that you've got the world's largest economy in the national spotlight across the world, not able to reach a compromise, because what they've done is they made this issue a political hot potato. This has become one issue of partisan politics rather than economic rationale. And what's really happening is the Republicans are trying to make this a political issue for 2012 when the elections come up, rather than solve something now which makes it a non-issue for the elections when, when Obama's up for election. Remember, Reagan won on the basis of the economy, stupid. They'd love to make that case again and make it an economic issue next year when it comes to the lifting of the ceiling. But just explain, if you would, yeah. why there would be so many international ramifications. I mean, we've already talked about um, what uh, the South China Morning Post had to say about the fact that the US dollar is pegged to other currencies around the world. That's one mechanism. Well, there's two things here. One, you've got just a sheer confidence traditionally in the US system, and hence the purchase of US debt. China holding over 1.1 trillion worth of U.S. Treasuries, followed by Japan at close to a trillion, and of course Hong Kong about 220 uh, billion there, which makes it an attractive asset as long as there's faith in the system. If there's no longer faith in the system, U.S. can't export its debt, and that creates problems for people who sit on huge amounts of U.S. Treasuries. For Hong Kong, the issue is compounded by the fact that their dollar is pegged on the U.S. dollar, which means their assets are written on the U.S. dollar face value, should the U.S. dollar decline, the value of its assets decline, which means people no longer have confidence in the currency, they might fuel their money into things like a property market, which leads to a property speculative bubble. So the ramifications are both directly because the value of your assets goes down, lack of confidence, and indirectly into alternative asset classes being fueled, gold, for example, or of course the property situation in Hong Kong, which is an indirect artificial increase of, of value because of... You've also got the scary prospect, haven't you, of uh, even if Mm -hmm. or when they do, the Republicans and Democrats come together and uh, cobble together a deal, uh, they're still going to suffer insofar as Standard and Paul's at least are, are, are looking with a great deal of suspicion at as to the goings on in Washington. They've not done themselves any favors here, have they? Right? They've taken this point, they've taken this issue to the very, very last deadline. I suspect we'll hit some compromise on Monday, leading for some final outcome by, by Tuesday's headlines. Otherwise, the market gets too nervous. And in the end, if nobody's happy, that's the best deal, right? They say sometimes the best deal is when nobody's fully happy, everybody's kind of happy, and compromise cannot be a bad word anymore, because otherwise, this leads to like massive consequences. It's drawn attention, of course, to the fact that the U.S. is massively indebted. I mean, there's an amount alive now who knows that they're not <laughs> in hot for about 14 trillion U.S. dollars. Let's turn our thoughts, though, to Europe, which is an 
whether it has been another potential source of uh, financial or investor worry. Um, even if you put aside Greece, you still have the problem that growth is looking like it's stalling. Well, absolutely. So you've got in the U.S. the U.S. Debt Clock dot org, and you're going to see various counters flicking over there for for various kinds of debt. It's not that dissimilar in Europe in many ways, except it's more fragmented, more down in the in the sort of Mediterranean economies. But what's made it more of, of greater concern now is that some of the figures from Germany just yesterday were less than expected. Some results from Siemens, from Volkswagen, etc., were less than anticipated, which kind of suggests the powerhouse of the, of the European economy, i.e. Germany, may be struggling a little bit, which was not anticipated even a week ago. And that's where the concern lies. So now with the second bailout of Greece, again, jury economics in Spain, Portugal, and Italy, if Germany, as the biggest economy, can pull it through, that leads to some nervousness. And it's kind of sing signaling where the world is going, right? In two years from now, the total trade between Germany and China will exceed that of Germany and France. So if that intra-trade is increasing, well, guess what? That's where the economy is going ahead, rather than the European economies themselves revving up. Um, going to the FT now, the, the uh, rather um, uh, a thorny issue of internet regulation. Yeah, so this is the Hollywood studios back in action, right? Except not, not quite like they had the last time. So remember in the past, they went after individual users, got uh, s uh, successful legal cases against downloaders of, of illegal content, or illegal do downloads of content, rather. But it really created negative press for them, because that really didn't help anybody. They didn't really stop anyone. It just got a backlash against the Hollywood studios. This time they said, look, we can't go against the supply of this content. We shut one side down. Two days later, another one comes up. This particular one is based in the Seychelles, so it's hard to even go after somebody there because the, the restrictions are out of their reach. But they can control the pipe. So if it's not the content, it's the conduit. And in this case, BT is the biggest supplier of internet broadband access across the UK. Clamp down on them, therefore you shut the pipe of content down and create a, a precedent for shutting illegal content across at least the Western world. There is a fine dividing line between creating this sort of um, control on the internet and also turning customers off. And the same question is raised by uh, Mark Zuckerberg's sister. Uh, the founder of Facebook, his sister is saying that there should no longer be anonymity on the internet. Who knows whether that will be possible or not? But it's an interesting question. Well, exactly, because what happens when you start clamping down on one aspect, you start going down a spectrum which is followed by, say, China or certain Middle East governments where censorship becomes sort of acceptable and cutting off sites for whatever reason becomes more acceptable. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg's sister's argument, of course, is one based on what we all sometimes suffer from, which is identity theft. And by having someone either steal or, or falsely create an identity, they kind of they, they allow themselves to say whatever without any consequences and ramifications. There's no accountability for them because you can't place. But there's something. also no cohesion. There are no because it, it's not it's not controlled by one democratically elected government. The internet, um, there is no cohesion as to how it's policed. And that's part of the attraction of the internet in some ways, right? That's what makes it sort of a market-driven phenomenon. And, and the fine balance will be where do you stop certain things like uh, vice content, which you don't want to make it accessible for everybody, and yet regulate it to, to this some point where it is not detrimental for either content producers, individual users, or the economics of the internet to continue to prosper. And very quickly, the China Daily, and uh, a case which has got a lot of people very, very uh, angry indeed. Uh, the allegations of official corruption which have led to the deaths of uh, more than 30 people in a train crash. It's a tricky one because a lot of the predictions about what China was going to do in this regard was about growing the high-speed network, taking it to 20,000 kilometers uh, in the next five years, uh, and exporting that. The U.S. has got a high-speed network. They want to be there. Malaysia just ordered something from China, their first big export deal. Um, is it really a human corruption issue or is it a technical issue? There's been suggestions of electrical failures and that's what may be the cause. The nice thing, if you may, about a human corruption issue is that you can kind of segment it and kick it out and say, we had a problem, we solved it, as opposed to acknowledging something that was technically inherently wrong, which is a much more difficult thing to solve and has far greater ramifications in terms of exporting their high-speed network. Andeep Ranga, Chairman of Industry, thank you very much indeed for taking us through the newspapers this morning. And thank you very much for joining us as we've gone through the papers here at BBC World News.